Hi guys, it's Archie Monaro. How's everyone doing? Good, 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 I hope. I've been thinking about doing this for a while. I wanted to do a video all about zoologist perfumes and ranking them from my least favourite to my favourite. And um, the reason I'm doing it is because not only is it fun for me, I get to talk about them again. They are my favourite fragrance house that exists at the moment. And I have to wait until spring for the new release, which I just can't do. So this gives me an excuse to talk about them again. Ha. Huh. So I have tried and reviewed every single fragrance that zoologists have released thus far from the beginning, their inception, all the way up to now. And just a little disclaimer, no shade in this video. I actually don't hate any of these fragrances. And that's the truth. They're my favourite house for a reason. Uh, I like all of them. Every single fragrance they release brings something to the table. There is, they each have their redeeming qualities. And the reason they're my favourite is because being a perfume lover, reviewer, connoisseur, no I don't like that word, I'm not going to call myself connoisseur, I think it's conceited. Having smelled so many fragrances and new releases all the time from multiple brands across the world, zoologists are the ones that always, when I smell them, I'm always surprised. I, it's, all, it's always something that I've never smelled before and as a perfume lover that is the most exciting thing. Smelling a new fragrance that you've never smelled and then going, oh I've never smelled that before. And they consistently do this. They consistently release things where I think, even if I don't like it so much, I have never smelled that before. And that is the reason. So, to not ramble too much, and Victor didn't pay me to do this, by the way, or any other video by Zoologist. <laughs> I just happen to love them and talk about them all the time. I wanted to rank all of the Zoologist fragrances from my least favorite to my favorite. So let's do it. So there were 16. So hold tight, get comfortable. I'm not gonna ramble on too much, but let's start with my least favorite fragrance. It is Panda, the original formula of Panda that came out in 2014, referencing paper down there. I was really glad when they reformulated this fragrance because it is my least favorite. In my review, there, uh, there is something about that formula which I'm kind of thankful doesn't exist anymore. Sorry to the hard work that went into it, but there was something just a little bit astringent and strange about it, although it was very different. It was a very different fragrance, very strange, very green, inspired by China, but it got reformulated in 2017, and now it's quite high up on my list, the new formula. But the original one just felt a bit weird, I don't know. It felt unusual, too unusual, and I, and I like unusual stuff. But this one just felt a bit weird and I, I didn't like it that much. The next one, sadly, is Elephant. As much as I appreciate the greenery of it, it's about an elephant trudging through jungle, through undergrowth. It's got a, a very realistic, almost dirty, leafy smell to it with a bit of chocolate and kind of a coconut husky smell and a lot of sandalwood. Um, it's just, when I think about them ranked, it's not one that I think if I owned it, I would wear that much. However, my mum loves it, and I gave her my 10 mil, and she adores it, so it went to a good home. And I love elephants in general. I just think that this one, if I, I imagine myself owning all of them, which ones would I wear the most and which ones would I not? An elephant, unfortunately, is at the bottom of the pile. The next one is Beaver, the new formulation that came out in 2016. I do think it's really, really cool, but it's lower on the list because I much prefer the new version of Beaver that came out. This was the second or the other zoologist fragrance that became reformulated. It's nice. It's an aqueous floral. It has a light animalic feeling. It's soft. It's kind of watery. It's about beavers and their dams, that kind of influence. And it's really nice, I, I do like it. Again, just imagining if I had them lined up on my shelf where it would sit, and it sits at number 14. Number 13 is Hyrax. Whoa, did I appreciate the artistry that came from this fragrance when I smelled it. The, they managed to capture this hot, arid, super animalic kind of African feeling in this fragrance. It's one of the most challenging ones, I think, to wear. There are others, but Hyrax, to me, 
while I definitely appreciate how it smells, it's not one that I could see myself wearing because it's really bold. It's triple animalic. It's Hyracium, Civet and Castorium in one fragrance. It's kind of spicy, it's hot and it's very abstract and cool and it's not for the faint hearted. So yeah, like I say, as much as I appreciate the artistry, it would sit at number 14, 13. <laughs> we'll get there, we'll get there. Number 12 is Macaque, it's the monkey fragrance. Lovely one, I love the use of galbanum in this fragrance, it's very green, it has a couple of tea notes in there, um, and I really like it, I love galbanum, but there are just other fragrances that I think are better in their line. It's not one, again, that I would reach for that often. I don't tend to gravit gravitate too much towards summery or lighter things. I'm all about the dark, and you'll see that when we get towards the top. These fragrances are kind of basically going lighter, possibly, maybe. But Macaque, yeah, I thought it's really cool. I still think it's really cool. I do wear it from time to time. Just, um, there are better stars of the show in my brain and for my personal tastes. The next one is T-Rex. Wow, this is one crazy fragrance. I absolutely love it. I think it's awesome. Like I said, this is my favourite brand. I like all of them for certain reasons, but this one is challenging again. The reason I, I don't think it would be near the top of my list is because I would never finish the bottle. It's not, it's not an everyday fragrance. It's centred around Cade. It's in, inspired by extinction. It's inspired by burning forests, blood, leather, metallic notes, black pepper, tropical flowers. There's a lot going on in there and it is a super sonically amazing fragrance, but it's towards the bottom of the list because of its wearability for me. I wear the craziest things, I really do, I'll wear anything. My mind is way open and I definitely appreciate how it's constructed and the work that went in, but with everything in life you have things that are more favourite and less favourite and this one is towards the lower end. The next one's a discontinued one, it's Beaver again, it's the original formula of Beaver. I remember wearing this when I went to India quite a lot. The original formula of Beaver was much more daring than the new one. The new one's lighter, it's brighter, it's more airy, it's more watery. The original one was a lot more animalic, it was a lot richer. It was still on the watery sort of feeling, but it was a bit more daring and animalics are challenging and this one was challenging. It was somewhere between being like, oh, that's a bit weird and something really pretty and I really liked that one. I was sad when it got reformulated, but companies do what they gotta do. When I compiled this list, the ninth one on the list surprised me. I thought it would be higher considering it's my favourite animal in the world. It's Hummingbird. When Zoologist announced they were releasing a fragrance called Hummingbird, I literally squealed. I was so excited. I couldn't wait to see what it was going to be like. I thought it was going to be hibiscus and stuff like that. This one's a lovely one. We're getting into kind of the middle of the list now. So these are all ones that I really adore. Um, and Hummingbird is lovely. It's essentially a white floral fragrance with fruity nuances. It's honeysuckle, it's jasmine, there's cherries, there's apples in it. It's really friendly. It's a white floral fragrance that doesn't feel like a typical white floral fragrance. And that's why it's middle of the list and it's great. It's, it's just, there are so many white florals out there and white florals are among my favorite styles of fragrance. I love tuberoses, jasmines, neroli, everything like that. This one just feels kind of naturalistic and it's kind of watery and it's just very different. It's different from any other white floral that's on the market today that I have smelled. And I have smelled a lot because I seek out white florals. So sorry, my beautiful hummingbird. I love you as an animal, but you're not top of the list. Number seven on the list is Dragonfly. Such a beautiful fragrance, really, really stunning. It's centered around iris. It's got lotus in it. It's about a dragonfly flitting around a pond. It's very aqueous, it's very light, and it has a real interesting note of rice in there, which gives it texture and it gives it depth and stops it from being just a regular pretty floral. This one, when it dries, is really, really beautiful. The iris is light, the iris is soft and watery. It's not a powdery, buttery iris. 
they really hit the nail on the head. I, in my review I said it smells iridescent, kind of like dragonfly's wings, you know that kind of pearlescent, iridescent kind of feeling. It's a really pretty addition to the line and I really love it. Number six is the incomparable and award-winning Bat. A lot of people think this is the most challenging fragrance. This is the one that's won awards for good reason, for innovation, for taking the earthy, green, fruity fragrance to an extreme, I guess. And this is one of the fragrances, one of the first zoologists that I smelled that was a, a super journey, you know? This one is a real chameleon. It takes, a, it goes through a lot of changes. It opens fruity, humid kind of guava on certain days, depending on the weather. When I smell it, when it's raining, it smells more like banana. It truly is a, a, a masterpiece of perfumery. There are, there's fig in there. There is this super strong note of upturned earth, like soil tincture. And then the fragrance descends into like a leathery vetiver type woody dark place. And it's mineral, it's, it's crazy, it's amazing. And it fills a room. It's one of the strongest zoologists that there are. And I love it. Number six on the list is Civet. This one, when I first smelled it, I didn't think I liked it that much, but it's a real grower. This one's kind of a nod to vintage. It's quite a friendly civet. It's essentially an amber, and there's huge notes of orange and coffee in it as well. So you get quite a lot of stuff. You get this orange citrus, you get deep roasted coffee, and then this warm, enveloping amber. Uh, I think there's ylang ylang in there as well. It's got a lot of notes of it. It's got a, a big note list, but it's a friendly, vintage kind of amber fragrance with these twists of coffee and orange. It's, it's different, it's not a typical amber. Zoologists do, does not do typical fragrances and it's the reason why they're my favourite. The fifth one on the list is Panda, the new formula of Panda. When I smelled the new formula of Panda I rejoiced because it was like the perfect tweaks were made to it. Everything that I wasn't so sure about with the original was kind of fixed and it's so much more wearable. Panda, of course, China inspired. It has bamboo, it has tea, it has shizo leaves, it has Buddha's hand citron, which is a really unusual citrus fruit that actually looks like a hand as opposed to a round ball shape. You have a slight soil tincture that you find in bat, but it's not too much. It's really crisp and green and almost aqueous and very light woody. It's a really good one and it projects massively. I love Panda. It's awesome. Okay, so we're getting to the favourites. We're getting to the real favourites now. Number four on the list is Rhino. Oh my gosh, Rhinoceros is just so out there. The craziest leather fragrance you can ever smell. It's meant to represent the hulking animal. Maybe it's hide, you know? And rhinoceroses are almost like armour plates of leather. And this one, when you first wear it, is this boozy leather jacket. It has Bacardi rum in it. It has everything heavy that you can put in a fragrance. There's pine needles in there, there's vetiver, there's patchouli, there's tobacco. It's just not an inside fragrance. I wore this fragrance to dinner with a friend once. Big mistake. It's not a very restauranty type inside thing, but it's awesome. It's unforgiving and bold and crazy and just awesome. So yeah, definitely try that one out if you can get a sample of it. So we're getting to the top three. Oh, number three and number two, I have interchanged so many times over the last four or five months, but I've settled on my top three. So, the third one is Nightingale. It's by the genius Tomu Inaba, a Japanese guy who, from what I read, isn't actually a perfumer. He just has this innate ability to create amazing fragrances. I personally hope that zoologists make a lot more fragrances with him in the future because I will be so excited. My number two spot is also by him. Nightingale is a Shepra fragrance. It is a super punchy, powdery, plum blossom, rose, violet fragrance. It's inspired by springtime in Japan. There's frankincense in there, there's myrrh, there's woods, there's a little bit of oud, which is perfectly placed. It's not an oudy fragrance by any means. It feels like a supersonic powder puff. It smells pink, it smells fluffy but edgy from woods and from resins and from just everything. It, it's just awesome. I wear it to bed. Confession. 
I wear it when I get out of the shower and I go to bed. It's really too strong to be wearing to bed, but I don't care. I wear it to bed. Number two is the one that has uh, knocked Nightingale off of the second spot and it's Moth. Oh my gosh, do I love this fragrance. Ooh, hello. Moth is just hauntingly beautiful, also by Tomu Inaba. This one has so much going on, It's re you really have to smell it. It makes me feel emotions when I smell it. It moves me, it stirs things in my brain that I can't quite explain. Oh, that rhymed, I was a poet and I didn't know it. It's centered around honey. Honey is the main thing I smell when I wear it, but the f choices of florals in here are amazing. They chose dusky florals to represent the dustiness of moths. Moths are basically made out of dust, right? Have you ever caught one in your hand? They just fall to pieces. But it's smoky. It's like a smoked honey incense, a little bit of oud, loads of spices, and lots of dusky florals. It's dark, it's gothic, soft. It's got a twist of honey, it's sweet, it's just everything to me. It's... I just love it. I love it so much. Victor and Tomu. Oh my gosh, this is some craziness happened. This is some perfume magic right here. And on to number one. It's gonna be obvious, I make no bones about the fact that my favourite zoologist fragrance is Camel. Right now, I don't think anything's ever gonna take it place, take its place. But with zoologist, who knows? I have no idea what's coming next. It's another reason why I love them so much. Camel is the ultimate one for me. If you're an oriental lover, I'm guessing you're gonna love it. It's about trade routes, it's North African inspired, it's about bazaars, it's about dried candied fruit, smoke, resins, little bit of oud, little bit of animalic in there as well, saffron. It's one of the smoothest zoologists that there are. The smooth woody fruitiness is amazing at the beginning and then it descends into a really exotic oudy place and it's the oud fragrance, I think, one of the oud fragrances that bowled me over, that kind of switched me onto oud, being not the biggest fan of oud. But Camel is my favourite, I love it so much, just absolutely stunning and it gets my number one spot. Anyway guys, I hope you like this rundown of my lovely zoologist. I love them. I cannot wait to see what's next. I'm always excited. And of course, I will be reviewing them. I have reviewed every single fragrance from this line. Go and search them if you care to hear a bit more of an in-depth uh, review about how they develop, what they smell like, all of that kind of stuff. This was just a top 16 list, which I've never done before. Anyway, I'm out from my own. Hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos and I'll see you guys soon for another review. Goodbye.